What's up, Lumios Trainers? Lumios Trainer Zack here. Welcome to the series where I review each Pokemon League arc in the anime. Each episode will be rated from 1 to 10, and the League's overall rating will be determined by the combined rating of each episode. In this video, I'll be reviewing Ash's second Pokemon League, the Johto League Silver Conference. Let's get started. Episode 1 Pop Goes the Sneasel in this episode, Ash and the gang are about to make it to Silvertown, where the Johto League will take place. They end up coming across where the Sacred Flame of Ho-Oh is kept before the tournament, but there's a problem. A Wild Sneasel is attacking anyone who comes near it, so because of this, the Torch Runners can't commence their running towards the League. On top of that, he's even joined by Machop and Machoke. What is this, an SOS battle? Luckily, Ash is here to save the day, but he's not alone, because he's also joined by a trainer called Harrison who decides to help as well. Yeah, you probably thought this episode was about Sneasel, right? But not really, it's about Harrison. He's a trainer from Hoenn, a region Ash hasn't been to before. Now sure, most of the episode is about trying to defeat Sneasel and even Team Rocket has a funny moment where they try to capture it, but in the end, it was really about showing how strong Harrison is. The highlight of the episode definitely had to be when Harrison sends out a Blaziken to face Sneasel. This was awesome. I remember seeing this episode for the first time ever and being blown away by this never before seen Pokemon. And you better believe that Ash and friends felt the same way. What made it even crazier is that Harrison ends up defeating and capturing the Sneasel that gave everyone such a hard time. Dang. The icing on the cake is Harrison revealing that he too was participating in the Johto League, and then he walks off into the distance. Whoa. Not a bad episode. Sure, I would have liked to see more League stuff, but it was a good introduction to Ash's League rival. And since he has Sneasel and Blaziken on his team, you just can't wait to see when Ash has to face off against them. This episode's rating is a 7 out of 10. Episode 2 A Claim to Flame It begins with Ash finishing up his registration for the Johto League, and now he's ready to battle. But before he can even qualify for the actual tournament, he's gonna have to win a series of preliminary battles first. In his first match, he uses Pikachu against Salvador's Furret. Pretty surprising actually, cause according to Misty, Pikachu was at a disadvantage. I figured a ground Pokemon would be stronger against an electric type. Quack. After this, we get a quick montage of Ash's other preliminary battles featuring Fanpy and Cyndaquil getting wins as well, which is pretty neat. The real standout of the episode has to be Gary though. What I like is how this episode was really about reintroducing him and showing that he isn't the same cocky Gary from the Indigo League. You think that Indigo League Gary would be so chill with this peasant? I don't think so. He has this moment with Ash where he's reminiscing about the start of their journeys as well as having this whole philosophical talk about future possibilities. This is some obvious foreshadowing about Gary's future goals, so it was cool to see this being set up. But of course, it isn't a Pokemon episode without Team Rocket interrupting in some way. So they prevent Ash from making it to the opening ceremony and steal Pikachu. But thankfully, good guy Gary came to the rescue and helped Ash out. But because of Team Rocket, the Torch Runner got injured. So it's up to the main character, Ash, to light the torch for the opening ceremony. As predictable as this was, it was actually a cool moment, not gonna lie. And with that, the Johto League Silver Conference can finally begin. All in all, it was a pretty good episode, so its rating is also a 7 out of 10. Episode 3 Love, Pokemon Style Now that the semi-final tournament has begun, Ash's next opponents have been revealed. The first of them being Macy. What's hilarious about this episode is that Macy ends up falling in love with Ash after he saves her life and rescues her Vulpix from Team Rocket. And I mean, <laughs> I don't blame her. Serena who? Misty who? Make way guys, cause have I got a shipping for you. Fire shipping. Jealous Misty? I know you are. Anyways, Macy's actually a fire type trainer, so Ash decides to bring Kingler for his match against her. But then it gets taken out by a bunch of Voltorbs. Talk about being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Luckily, Squirtle is back, which is when this episode really starts to shine. Ash's battle with Macy was actually really good. He was totally prepared for Macy. And even when she tries to surprise him by whipping out an Electabuzz, he's totally unbothered by it, cause he brought Fanpy just for that. Macy actually ended up getting the advantage though, which leaves Ash down to Squirtle. But now we really get to see the results of his training with the Squirtle squad, cause he takes out Electabuzz and Koilava, which in turn, ends up winning Ash the match. Squirtle was honestly the star of this episode. It was great to see it return and be in the best battling shape it's ever been. Because of that, this episode's rating is an 8 out of 10. 
Episode 4 Tie one on. Now it's time for Bulbasaur's epic return. Well, it isn't really that epic, because he's just kind of there chilling like he never left. But it was still cool to see him back, though. A cool moment is when Bulbasaur and Squirtle run into trouble with Jackson's Meganium and the Zumaru. It was hilarious to see Squirtle get all serious and put on his thug glasses to show that he ain't no punk. This moment is actually pretty important, because it sets up the rivalry between Bulbasaur and Meganium, which in turn makes their battle in the final match all the more better. Now, Jackson didn't seem like much of a threat in the beginning, seeing as how he lost against Macy in the goofiest way. But surprisingly, he's pretty good. His shiny Magneton, yes, yeah, shiny Magneton, takes out Pikachu and Cyndaquil, so Ash is down to Bulbasaur. Luckily, he's able to take it out, which means Meganium is left. This final battle was actually really intense. Bulbasaur was at a disadvantage since he was facing off against a fully evolved starter, but it still takes hits like a champ and dishes him out as well. I loved the final Solar Beam Clash to end the battle. It was pretty epic. In the end, it turns out being a tie. Gee, didn't see that coming. But since Ash has the most points, he moves on to the Victory Tournament, and his first opponent is none other than Gary. Man, what an ending. This episode's rating is a 9 out of 10. Episode 5 The Ties That Bind Alright, it's time for the long-awaited final battle between Ash and Gary. But before we get started, how about we take up some time to give Ash and Gary some backstory on their rivalry? I mean, sure, we already have five seasons of the series as backstory, but still. We need something that'll add more emotional weight to this battle. So here's a rusty Pokeball. Yeah, apparently Ash has had this all along as a good luck charm. Five, five seasons. seasons. And now we're finding out about this. Okay. So it turns out Ash and Gary fought over this Pokeball when they first started their journey. Wait, hold up. Yeah, I just rewatched the first episode and this never happened. The problem with this episode is that, okay, I get it, you want to add more tension to Ash and Gary's battle, but we already knew they had a major rivalry. Plus, the motivator they wanted to use is a rusty Pokeball? First of all, it completely contradicts the first episode, and secondly, we have an even better motivator they could have used. Ash and Gary's first battle where Ash ended up losing. This honestly felt like a waste of time when we could have gotten started with the battle. Yeah, it's cool that we got Charizard back, and yeah, the battle seems really intense from the beginning, but we only got like 4 minutes of it because of the forced backstory. Because of that, this episode's rating is a 6 out of 10. Episode 6 Can't Beat the Heat Okay, now we can really focus on the battle between Ash and Gary. And man, was this a great one. Obviously, we know that Ash wants to beat Gary, but you can tell how serious this is thanks to his team. For starters, he's not using Pikachu. That's a big deal because it's his go-to Pokemon. Ash usually battles with speed, but this time, his team is all about power. He wants to make sure that when he attacks, they'll hit hard and knock down Gary's team fast. And we see this thanks to some awesome wins that Ash gets with Snorlax. Unfortunately, Gary isn't a pushover and pretty much wipes down most of Ash's team until he's down to Charizard. But this is where everyone's favorite moment comes in, when Charizard proceeds to mow down the rest of Gary's team like nothing. The conclusion between Charizard and Blastoise was an epic one. Very fitting that the final match is between the mascots of Pokemon Red and Blue. So basically what the battle is telling me is that Pokemon Red is better, which <laughs> I already knew, but it's good to get some confirmation. Anyways, this was such a satisfying win for Ash that really gives a solid conclusion to his rivalry with Gary. And to show Ash that he's totally fine with the loss, Gary gives him half of the rusty Pokeball. Okay, alright. What, what, why did we have to bring that up? The episode was doing so well without it. Other than that teeny moment, it was honestly a perfect episode. It gets a 10 out of 10. Episode 7 Playing with Fire It's time for the next battle, Ash vs Harrison. What makes this matchup unique is that Harrison is from the Hoenn region, so he has some Pokemon that Ash has never battled against before. For example, he leads off with Kecleon, who can camouflage with the surroundings. Pikachu has trouble at first, but luckily, it's able to take it out. Because of this win, Ash pretty much has the lead for the rest of the battle. Some great moments are Totodile taking out Sneasel and Bayleaf taking out a freaking Houndoom but the MVP of this episode has to be Snorlax. It's hilarious because it comes out of sleep, which allows Harrison's Hypno to use Dream Eater, but Snorlax didn't like that one bit, so it proceeds to destroy it with a Hyper Beam. Not just that, but it was also epic to see it take out Harrison's Steelix with an Ice Punch Uppercut followed by a Hyper Beam. You go, Snorlax! Too bad it gets taken out when its Hyper Beam gets countered, 
Wait, hold up. That doesn't make any sense. Anyways, the episode ends with what we've really been waiting for. Harrison's Blaziken. It has no problem taking out Ash's Bayleaf, showing that it really is a threat. Although it was facing off against a Grass type, so was that really hard to do? Because of this, now Ash is down to his final Pokemon, Charizard. This episode was awesome, but what's gonna hold it back a little for me is that most of the wins were just one or two shots, so it gets an 8 out of 10. The final episode. Johto Photo Finish. Here we get the epic clash between the two fire starters, Charizard and Blaziken. In my opinion, this is the best battle the series had to offer at this point in time, even though Ash loses. It was super intense to see these fire types deliver devastating blows to each other. Sure, later battles are more fast paced and have more action in it, but back in the early 2000s, this was crazy. Now, like I already said before, Ash loses. But I still like the battle. Ash didn't go down like a chump this time. He gave it his all. Not like the freaking Indigo League. The rest of the episode is pretty much the resolution of the league. First we see Harrison getting defeated by John Dixon who ends up winning the whole league. Who? Yeah, I thought the same thing. But more importantly, we get Gary, who announces his new dream of becoming a Pokemon researcher. It was a good conclusion to the Johto League in my opinion. Firstly, the battle was literally flames, and then we even get a tease for Ash's next journey in the Hoenn region. The only thing that kind of brings it down is the random stuff like the ghost that got stuck under a tree, and then Team Rocket hijinks at the end, so it gets a 7 out of 10. This league's overall rating is a 7.8 out of 10. It's pretty good. Hey, that's pretty good. First of all, it's clear that this league learned from the mistakes the Indigo League made. There wasn't nearly as much filler and Team Rocket stuff like the last time, which allowed us to focus on more league action, which is kind of the whole point. This was really the culmination of Ash's entire journey in the original series. We see every Pokemon he's caught up until this point make an appearance in some way, some more than others. The highlight is obviously Ash finally defeating Gary, which is the perfect climax for the league. It was dumb though how they tried to force the Pokeball backstory on us. It didn't have to be there at all to be honest. Especially since it's never brought up before or after this point. And lastly, Harrison was the perfect league rival to defeat Ash. He faced Ash using Pokemon he's never seen before. And since Ash couldn't beat him, this would obviously get him more interested in the region that he came from. This was a great setup for Ash's next adventure. And I really wish that later leagues did the same. Although this wasn't perfect, it's way better than the Indigo League, that's for sure. It did a great job at wrapping up Ash's Johto and Cancel journey, as well as setting up the next series if you wanted to keep watching. And although there were still 3 episodes to go, in a way, the Johto League can be seen as the true ending of the original series. Thanks for watching everyone! If you're new to the channel and you like what I do here, subscribe to become a Lumios Trainer today! Also, follow me on Twitter to find out what's up and what's new! Last but not least, make sure to live your life to the fullest, and I'll see you all next time!